Whiplash is by far my favorite movie of 2014. Maybe one of my favorite movies, like, in general. I mean, great sound editing, compelling story, phenomenal acting, but its forte is the script. It does so much so well that I can watch this movie multiple times and not get bored of it. And I can't say that about a lot of other movies. I mean, like, The Dark Knight, that's good every, like, once in a while, but my favorite movies are the ones that I can get more out of it through second and third viewings, rather than less. So going back to Whiplash, the character that steals the show is the music instructor, Terrence Fletcher, played by J.K. Simmons. Oh, you fucking weepy willow shit sack. You are a worthless, friendless, faggot lip little piece of shit, you fucking pathetic pansy ass fruit fuck. To give a view of the character in the nutshell, imagine if J. Jonah Jameson from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy shaved his head, did a shit ton of meth, and then started teaching music. That's pretty much his character. What we're gonna do today is break down this one really great clip right here and look at all the rhetoric and speaking techniques that he uses to command authority and push his students. Listen up, cocksuckers! Hurry the fuck up. Get your music. Irene only, set one. Rhythm section out first. Tanner, the kit is a fucking tonal catastrophe. Get it in tune, all right? Rhythm and soloist, bar 45. We're gonna pick up the tempo there, all right? Bar 106, brass. Do not forget we sharp that ninth. Everybody remember, Lincoln Center and its ilk use these competitions to decide who they're interested in and who they're not. And I am not gonna have my reputation in that department tarnished by a bunch of fucking limp dick sour note flatter than their girlfriend's flexible tempo dipshits. Got it? One more thing, Eugene, give me that. If I ever find one of these lying around again, I swear to fucking God, I will stop being so polite. Get the fuck out of my sight before I demolish you. Stage right, in order, now. I can still fucking see you, mini-me! Okay, just in that one 55-second clip of the movie, there were so many communication and rhetoric techniques being used over there. Didn't catch them all? Well, let's look again. Listen up, cocksuckers! Hurry the fuck up. Get your music. Aside from that dirty word attention grabber, listen up cocksuckers. Aside from that, look at J.K. Simmons' posture. You know, how he's standing fully erect, you know, up straight with the shoulders back, you know, Jordan Peterson's rule. Looks like a, a military admiral almost, you know. If you, if you showed someone this scene completely out of context with, you know, no prior knowledge of the film, they could totally tell that Fletcher is the figure of authority in this movie and one who's gonna command the jazz ensemble. Irene only, set one. Rhythm section out first. Tanner, the kit is a fucking tonal catastrophe. Get it in tune, all right? Rhythm and soloist, bar 45. We're gonna pick up the tempo there, all right? Bar 106, brass. Do not forget we sharp that ninth. Okay, so while that segment is not as overwhelming as before, um, Two things happened there. Number one, he used a hyperbole, right? It's like a statement that's very exaggerated, but still illustrates a point when he says that the drum kit's a tonal catastrophe right there. It has a good ring to it. He does that a lot in the movie. It's a good trademark. And also when he's going through all these like micromanaged details right there, to sharp a ninth on a certain bar. I mean, this guy, he does remind us as the viewer of how methodical and well-educated Terrence Fletcher really is. Everybody remember, Lincoln Center and its ilk use these competitions to decide who they're interested in and who they're not. And I am not going to have my reputation in that department tarnished by a bunch of fucking limp dick sour note flatter than their girlfriend's flexible tempo dipshits. Got it? All right, now we get to the real insults. Let me just reread that. Uh, limp dick sour note flatter than their girlfriend's flexible tempo dipshits. I mean, think about that. Rather than calling the students a bunch of, you know, limp dicks or a bunch of sour notes or you know flexible tempo dipshits he just takes all the he just rattles all these names and sort of just rolls them out into this big giant punchy diss and it's really funny how he takes you know normally you know a limp dick there's an adjective and a noun but then he actually uses that as another adjective within itself to describe to describe them a bunch of limp dick sour note flexible tempo i mean again that right there is kind of witty one more thing, Eugene, give me that. If I ever... Now, so if you noticed after that one more thing, Fletcher's tone starts to change. When he does that, if I ever, 
it grabs our attention, whether you realize it or not. When there's a big like shift in volume or shift in tone, or it perks up our ears. Not to mention holding up the folder. It serves as a good prop for um, foreshadowing the next scene when Andrew actually loses the folder. Find one of these lying around again, I swear to fucking God, I will stop being so polite. Now, we've all heard a threat at one point or, or another. I mean, sometimes they're legitimate, sometimes they're empty, other times they're just in movies. But what I love about this is just how vague and open-ended it is. He says he'll stop being so polite. I mean, he doesn't just specify, if you drop this folder, you're gonna be cut from the band or you're gonna be in trouble. He just says he'll stop being polite. Like, what, what would that look like? All the jazz students and us as an audience are now being like kept in suspense. I mean, we have seen before we know how harsh, aggressive, and unpredictable Fletcher can be. So yeah, what you saw right here, this scene, this is him being polite right now. Get the fuck out of my sight before I demolish you. So two things happen right there. So first off, Fletcher again, he does the open-ended threat with, um, he, he says of all the words he chooses, demolish. Like, again, what would that look like? You don't know, okay, you have to fill in the blank, right? And he has that blunt as an atom bomb, overly confident tone with no hesitation. Makes for a powerful insult. All right, and the second trait that we saw right there is he gesticulates. Yes, you know, I know he keeps with the, the posture and everything, but then what he does is he extends his arm and he makes eye contact with the student who he's like calling out right there. Get the fuck out of my face. You see, right there, just like he doesn't just look at him while holding the folder. That little change right there makes a huge difference. Stage right in order now. I can still fucking see you, mini me. <laughs> did, did you hear that? Wait, wait, wait. Let me just, let me just, let me go back and like play that again just in case you didn't. <laughs> I can still fucking see you, mini me. How the hell are you supposed to come back from that? I mean, there's no way, right? I, the reason that this one liner I think works so great is because what Fletcher is doing is he's using this grade school bully tactic right there of name calling. I mean, remember when like Donald Trump called Senator Rubio Little Marco or he dubbed Secretary Clinton Crooked Hillary? I mean, yes, okay, they're child insults and nicknames, but they work so well. I think it's because like they catch on, they stick, and it makes you, when you think of that person, you start to associate them with that nickname. I, mean, I can no longer watch uh, movie insult compilations anymore because seriously, you could just do one with J.K. Simmons' character and it tops them all. I mean, really. I mean, his charisma and sarcastic wit are products of some excellent writing and directing, but it sort of shows how, you know, in screenwriting, there's sort of an art to the insult. And it's, I know it seems like a very rarely viewed, you know, way of looking at it, but it really shows in this. And these techniques that are all being listed are things that, you know, potentially one could use if they're trying to command authority. I mean, when I say you can use them, don't, take that too seriously if you know what i mean anyway listen thanks for watching this was uh you know if you have any more scene breakdowns that you want me to do please let me know i'd be happy to but again this is one of my favorite movies and i hope to make a lot more of these video essays so thank you for watching guys good night